Alrighty, folks, I'm feeling pretty good on a Thursday morning because we're now 3-0 and in our last three extra daily picks on my premium page. And the good news is I've got another extra daily pick going off here today. And if you sign up for that package here today, it's only going to cost you just $2.99 for 30 days of service. But wait, there's more because if you sign up for my extra daily pick here today, you're also going to get access to my daily best play every single day for the next 30 days. Absolutely free. It's going to be included with your purchase. The math works out to be just nine cents a day. I currently have over 640 members who are signed up and active on my premium page right now. Now, folks, if just two premium picks a day aren't enough for you and you want more, well, if you want to access all of my premium selections, every single one of them, there is a way you can do that, and that's by signing up for my full access, all-inclusive chairman package. Chairman members get access to every single personal play of mine, every single package, every single day for the next 30 days. As an added bonus, you also get access to my chairman podcast absolutely free. It's included with your purchase. But once again, guys, if you uh, don't need to access every single one of my, you know, premium plays, but you could use like two a day, a couple a day, uh, my extra daily pick package, it's for you. It's where it's at. It's only going to cost you just nine cents a day for 30 days of service. And with that, folks, let's go ahead and dive into some college football action. We're actually going to start off with Kent State at UCF, 7 o'clock Eastern kickoff. UCF's minus 35 and a half, totals 55. Now, uh, I actually do think the Knights are going to have some problems covering this number here. It is a, uh, a pretty large number. Uh, I do think the Knights are going to take this thing to the ground, uh, probably going to have a handful of sustained uh, drives running the football, and I uh, actually do think this one can get over the total. Uh, although, you know, it just feels like a you know, 44 to 13 game to me, um, thinking like the extra points are going to be a little bit screwed up here today. Um, Hey, no real meat and potatoes here. Uh, just a little bit of feel. Give me Kent State plus 35 and a half over 55. It's a big number in your season opener. All right, next matchup, Elon Wake Forest, 7 o'clock Eastern kickoff. This game's currently off the board. And even though Wake Forest lost their quarterback to Notre Dame, uh, they didn't schedule this one to lose. Uh, we call this one a good old-fashioned tune-up game. Uh, if you have a son on the Elon squad, uh, they could be in danger of some serious injury today. Uh, today. Uh, give me Wake Forest getting the job done against the spread. All right, next matchup, Rhode Island, Georgia State, 7 o'clock Eastern kickoff. That's another one that is still currently off the board. Uh, Georgia State, they have better athletes, and uh, they actually had a couple of key victories last season uh, against the likes of Southern Miss, Old Dominion, and Army. Uh, the Panthers also had an explosive offense, and uh, they do return some key starters from that unit. And uh, even though Rhode Island on the other side had a couple of marquee wins uh, over some FCS schools last year, they did suffer losses to the likes of New Hampshire, William & Mary, and Delaware. Uh, really no comparison. Uh, uh, Georgia State, much better school. Uh, you know, Rhode Island played some Really terrible defense in a lot of those games last season. Uh, Georgia State should be able to score a million here. Give me Georgia State getting the job done against the spread. All right, next matchup, St. Francis, PA, Western Michigan, 7 o'clock East. Uh, this game's off the board, but I'm, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not sure what this number's going to open up at. Uh, I am assuming it's going to be pretty high, going to be a big number, probably double digits. And... Uh, I'm going to assume no one's backing the Red Flash in this one. Uh, the Red Flash is the nickname of St. Francis, PA. But I'll tell you this. Uh, St. Francis has little issue moving the football. At least they had little issue last year. They scored more points a game than most teams in the FCS. Uh, they hung 52 on Merrimack, 51 on Duquesne, and 57 on Long Island University. They're facing a Western Michigan team who... Had one of the worst offenses in the MAC 
Uh, these guys scored 23 points or less in nine out of their final 10 ball games uh, in 2022. They also suffered outright losses to the likes of Northern Illinois, Bowling Green, and the Ohio Bobcats. So although there is a discrepancy in talent, it's not a huge discrepancy. And uh, once again, I think this number is going to be insanely high. I think a lot of money is going to go in the Broncos. Uh, some folks probably never even heard of St. Francis, PA. But uh, I like him to cover any type of number here. Give me St. Francis of PA getting the job done against the spread. All right, next matchup, NC State, UConn, 7.30 p.m. East. NC State's minus 14 away from home. Total's 46. Uh I'll tell you what, I'm not sure the Wolfpack um, made enough upgrades offensively uh, to right the ship because these guys were terrible with the ball in their hands last year. And when it comes to the number, uh, these guys were terrible at covering the spread. They failed to cover in eight out of their final 10 ball games last year. Uh, failures to cover against the likes of Maryland, Louisville, and Boston College. Uh, and speaking of Boston College, UConn held them to just three points last season in a mid-season victory. And to be fair, the Huskies played some pretty tough defense in a lot of different spots. Now, they also covered the point spread in seven out of their final nine ball games of 2022. Uh, man, I'll tell you, double-digit spread, two-touchdown spread, away from home. I don't think North Carolina can get it done. Give me UConn plus 14, under 46. All right, the one uh, everybody cares about, Florida, Utah, 8 o'clock east. Utah's four and a half, total's 44. Now, uh, the Utes did have one of the best offenses in the country last year. Uh, they put up 47 and 43 against USC in two gatherings last year. Uh, They're also facing a Florida defense who was pretty awful down the home stretch last season. And uh, I'm just not sure if... Uh, uh, I'm not sure if Utah's going to be overly faster or quicker than the Gators, but I definitely think they're going to be more efficient. Plus, uh, there's a bit of a revenge factor from last year. Uh, Utah came out flat uh, against the Gators in the opener and uh, pretty much ruined their season before it got started. So I don't think they're going to be doing that. Uh, they were probably looking forward to this game after week one last year. Uh, look for Utah to have a good game on offense Give me the Utes, minus four and a half, over 44. All right, another game of interest, a little Big Ten showdown. Nebraska, Minnesota, 8 o'clock east. Minnesota's minus seven, totals 43. Now, the Gophers do tend to start off seasons pretty hot and heavy. And I'll tell you what, defensively, man, these guys were tough to move the ball against last year. Uh, one of the best defenses in the country, let alone the Big Ten. Uh, they're going to face a new-look Nebraska team who's uh, – Probably going to have some growing pains, at least on offense. Uh, they looked real bad in the uh, last month of the season last year. Uh, I think the Gophers really bury these guys and limit their first downs. Plus, when you have a rah-rah guy uh, like Minnesota's coach, you start off the season quick. You start off fast. You start burning out in like week five, week six. So give me Minnesota minus seven under 43. All right, next matchup, South Dakota, Missouri, 8 o'clock east. This game's off the board. Now, the South Dakota Coyotes, they were terrible defensively last season. They lost three out of their final four ball games last year, and uh, they allowed 36 points a game on average during that span. Of course, that's against FCS competition. They're also facing a Missouri team who can move the football, and uh, they did have some marquee covers over some big schools last year. The Tigers covered against the likes of Arkansas, Georgia, and Auburn. Actually gave Georgia a scare. Could have realistically beat them. It was just a one-score game. So I really don't care how big this number is. I think the Tigers move the ball well today. Give me Missouri getting the job done against the spread. All right, next matchup, Arkansas Pine Bluff. Tulsa, 8 o'clock east off the board. And uh, this one should be a massacre. Uh, Tulsa scored a whole bunch of points against teams like Houston, USF, and Temple last year. Uh, school is much more talented than Arkansas Pine Bluff. Uh, the Golden Lions, they suffered losses last year to the likes of Prairie View, uh, Grambling, and Florida A&M. They also gave up a whole lot of points. Uh, this is going to get ugly. Give me Tulsa against the spread. All right, next matchup. 
NC A and T taking on UAB. Uh, Eight o'clock East. Uh, that game is off the board, and uh, I do expect uh, UAB to come out here flat. Tough to get up for NC A and T in your opener, and uh, I also have to assume we'll see a uh, a large number in this one when it's finally released uh, with regard to the spread. Now uh, the Blazers were a co a terrible covering team last year. They failed to cover in their final three ball games, and they actually went just two and eight against the spread in their last ten. They suffered losses to the likes of Florida Atlantic, Western Kentucky, and Rice. And they're facing an NC a and squad who won a bunch of ball games last year. And they have one of the more explosive offenses in the FCS. Uh, I gotta imagine UAB is going to be flat. They know they have better athletes. They definitely have better coaching and facilities. But their athletes aren't that much better than the Aggies. Give me NC A and T getting the job done against the spread. I gotta imagine that's gonna be a large number for them, and uh, I think they're gonna cover. All right, next and final matchup. Ugh, ugly one. Southern Utah, Arizona State, ten o'clock East. This game's off the board. Should be a massacre as well. I'm not expecting uh, the Thunderbirds to move the ball all that much. That's it. That's all I got for you. Give me Arizona State getting the job done against the spread. I don't care what that number is. All righty, folks. Now it is time for our quick pick recap. Give me Kent State plus 35 and a half over 55. Wake Forest getting the job done against the spread. Georgia State getting the job done against the number. I'm 3-0. and My last three extra daily picks on my premium page. And the good news is I have another extra daily pick going off here today. The link is in my bio. St. Francis, PA, against the spread. UConn, plus 14, under 46. Utah Utes, minus 4.5, over 44. Minnesota Golden Gophers, minus 7, under 43. Missouri Tigers against the spread. Tulsa against the spread. NCA and t against the spread. With my next and final free pick, give me Arizona State getting the job done against the number.